Today we're going to be taking these two household aluminum cans and turning them into one of these awesome pendants. Now if you don't have all of these items uh, that I'm going to use in this video, there you really don't need anything except for a Dremel. And I got the Dremel 3000. Uh, I made the wrong purchase of a stylus Dremel at first, so uh, just know that just to get a normal Dremel, don't get one of the uh, stylus ones because it won't work as well. So the first thing I did is I wanted to get the ink off of the beer can. So uh, there's a little trick to this and that's to use acetone, uh, like 100% acetone nail polish remover. Um, but you have to do that after you do a pressure cooker for 30 minutes. So I don't know what it does to the coating on the paint on the can, but the pressure cooker makes the acetone penetrate it. If you try to use acetone on it before you do it in the pressure cooker, it just won't come off. So um, again, if this if you don't have a pressure cooker, no need. We're going to sand it down anyway to give it a brushed aluminum look so you don't even need to do this i just chose to do this because it's less sanding less work um, for me down the road but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your pressure cooker on uh high steam i use just a two cups of water um put it on high pressure and put it on for 30 minutes and then uh 30 minutes later you just bring it out let it cool for a few minutes and then you can start rubbing the acetone on it Now you also see that the um, most of the paint comes off of it, but there's still like the signature, uh, the logo M for the Michelob Ultra that I just cannot get off. So uh, it partially defeats the purpose of using the acetone to get rid of all the graphics, um, but it'll still be a lot easier for me to sand uh, that off uh, than it would be to sand all of the paint off.
And here is what the can looks like after I'm done um, with the acetone. So the next step I'm going to do, I used a drill myself, just drill in some hardware parts that I found in my toolbox on nuts and bolts and stuff to uh, basically attach the cap of the beer bottle to my drill so that I could just hold the sandpaper and, and give it that brushed look. Now, you can still do that if you don't have a drill, if you have the Dremel. Uh, it has an attachment that has a tiny little screw on there, and it also even has a tiny little uh, drill bit. So uh, you can just use the Dremel to do a drill bit into the cap and then attach it with the screw. It would be best to, if you happen to have a washer, to reinforce it, but it's so small. Um, I tried it. it. It works fine without a washer, but uh, you might the cap might give a little bit um, more than it would if you had a washer. So once you've got this can jimmy rig to your Dremel or your drill, um, you'll want to have some sandpaper in hand to uh, give it that nice brushed look. Um, so if you have, if you either didn't have a pressure cooker um, or you have the leftover residual um, graphic on there, just start with a 60 grit because it'll go so much faster than if you just do a 220 grit. Uh, start with a 60 grit till you can't see any more of the graphics and then move on to 220 to give it that final look. There will be spots on the can that are like little dents that when you're sanding with the Dremel or the drill, it doesn't get to. So they'll still be nice and shiny or they'll still have the paint on underneath if you didn't do the pressure cooker. Um, so with that, you just do a little hand with the 220 grit. You want to go by hand and go in there if, if you have the paint on and maybe you start with the 60 and you finish with the 220 in there. Uh, but what you basically want to do is you want to roughen up all those dents so they blend in with the rest of it. So you're, the, you're going to scratch it by hand, but then you're going to go over the outside of the can another round because the scratches aren't going to line up, uh, very well. The ones that you do manually. So. Do them manually, go around uh, with it another time with the uh, Dremel or the drill to give it that finished look.
Next, what we're going to want to do is mark our cans on where we're going to cut them with the Dremel. Now, what I like about the sweet and condensed milk cans is that they're the perfect height and they don't have any ribs on the edges. So they're a flat, smooth can. Um, and so what I like to do is I like to mark this, um, just take a Sharpie and basically lay it on the ground and, and um, swivel the can around uh, until you have a black line all the way around the edge. And that should get rid of the bevel on both ends. Now we're going to want to cut the sweetened condensed milk can along that black line we just drew with our Sharpie. Um, I use a, a one and a half inch Dremel metal blade um, to cut along it. And I also, I just happen to have PVC pipe around. This is not necessary at all, but just to make it easier uh, for me, I actually zip tied the Dremel to some PVC pipes that lined the blade up with the line. So all I had to do was just turn the can around as I cut. The aluminum for the condensed milk can is a bit thicker than the one for the beer can. Um, so it does take a little bit longer uh, to cut through the condensed milk can, but just take your time and go slow. Make sure that you have a smooth, nice edge. Some of these cuts you see in this video I made with the Dremel stylus, uh, which I would not recommend for cutting through <laughs> this metal because it doesn't spin as fast as a normal Dremel or the Dremel 3000 that I ended up using. Um, Therefore, the cuts take even longer.
once you're done making these cuts, you're going to be left with some metal uh, shards or fringe on the edge edges that you're going to want to sand off. So I just take a piece of sandpaper and your 45 degree angle on the inside, the outside of the can as well. Uh, just go ahead and shave those off. And then what I like to do is put the can on the sandpaper on a flat surface and just uh, with my hand rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise uh, so that you make sure that you get that edge nice and even so there's a smooth edge because when you're doing using the Dremel you can easily uh, <clears throat> make a wavy edge instead of a flat one so um, just to make it look nice and professional just finish it off by uh, sanding it on a flat surface.
Now it's time to cut the aluminum can. Now the can itself, uh, when it's sitting upright, you want to make a line at six and a half inches. That is right before the can bends into the neck. So you have a nice long straight shaft. So 6.5 inches. Um, and then you also want to make another line at four and three quarters inches. So four and three quarters inches from the bottom and then from the bottom to the top six and a half so that'll give you the two pieces you need to make the center cylinder for this pendant
Now that we have our beer can cut to the right dimensions and it has that brush finished look on it, it's time to start assembling the pieces to make the pendant. So for this next step, you're going to need a wire hanger and some pliers with some wire snips on them. So now we're going to take our wire hanger and some pliers with wire snips on them and make a couple pieces we're going to need to assemble the pendant. The first type of piece we're going to need is just a two inch long straight piece of that hanger wire. So cut three of those, three two inch long pieces of wire hanger. Next we're going to need to make three corner pieces with the wire. So you want three right angles and we're going to take those pliers and bend about a half an inch up into a right angle and then cut it off at three quarters of an inch. So one side of your right angle is going to be a half inch long and the other side is going to be three quarters of an inch long. So you want three of those. Now for this next part, uh, you want to make sure that the top and bottom part of the aluminum cans are lined up with the space in between. So I actually used two pieces of PVC pipe I had laying around. You can use two pens to line them up. Whatever you have laying around the house, just make sure that the space in between the two pieces is one and three eighths inches. For this next part, we're going to need super glue and baking soda. Why baking soda? Because it speeds up the hardening of super glue much, much faster than air drying. Now take one of those two inch long pieces of wire hanger that you cut and place them on the inside of the canisters connecting the two. Apply some super glue to both the top and the bottom pieces, making sure that it's in contact with both the beer can and the wire. And then pour some baking soda over the super glue. Now the baking soda has hardened the top part of the super glue, but the part where it's attached to the aluminum can is not as quickly cured. So I like to leave this for about an hour. After an hour is done, I rotate the can 30 degrees and apply a second one. You'll do it again after another hour and do the third one. While we wait for the super glue to dry, we're going to focus our attention on that sweetened condensed milk can so we can get that ready to attach after the beer can has full. For the next step, you're going to need gold reflective tape. So you're going to want to take that gold reflective tape and cut it into two strips, nine and a half inches long. The tape I used was only two inches wide and we have about two and three quarters inches to cover on the inside. Um, so that's why we need two strips. If you happen to have a uh, roll of gold tape that's um, two and three quarters inches, then you only have to cut one of these strips. Now go ahead and take one of those strips and you're gonna wanna line up the edge of it with the inside edge of the can and you're gonna apply the tape around the inside of the can flip it over and do it to the other side on the inside of the can so you have a completely gold surface on the inside of the can. Now it's time to paint the outside of the can black. Uh, I use spray paint. Um, if you have just a roller paint you can use a roller um, or a brush. It's going to have a little bit of a different texture um, but it's whatever you have handy or whatever effect you want to go for. The reason we didn't paint the outside before we did the gold tape is because the gold tape can be a bit tricky. Um, and I found myself uh, either scratching the outside or getting the tape accidentally stuck to the outside. I just didn't want to have to go back and repaint the outside again. So I did the gold tape beforehand. So to protect the gold tape, um, since I use spray paint, I took regular old printer paper. I took two pieces of pa printer paper, rolled it up and put it through the canister and let them expand so that the paper was touching the gold and so that the spray paint wouldn't get anywhere on the gold. To get a good finish on this black spray paint, I sprayed from a distance of about a foot and I did one layer, let it rest for about four or five minutes, sprayed another layer, and then I actually let it dry for over an hour. I came back and I did that again. So I applied two more coats, spaced four to five minutes uh, between the coats so there wasn't any runs. All right, so now we have the black and gold ring that needs to be attached to the beer can. 
So how are we going to do that? We're going to use the right angles that we had cut from the hanger. In order to get them placed properly, we want to mark with a sharpie on the gold side, the inside of that uh, sweet condensed milk can, where we're going to put those right angles. To get that gold and black ring centered over the space uh, that you made in the beer bottle, I found that the uh, little McCormick jars, like the one ounce, sometimes they're two ounces, depends on what's in them, but they're all the same uh, height. They're one ounce jars. Um, those work perfectly when you stack two of them on each other. So total, I used six. Uh, so I, used, I had three stacks of six around the beer can, and then I set the ring on top of it. Now you're going to take that black and gold ring off of the spices, put it on the table so that your black Sharpie marker is facing up. Now you're going to cover your mark with super glue, and then you're going to take one of those right angles that you cut from wire and you want the long end to be attached where the super glue is to the gold side of the ring. You're going to put baking soda on it so it cures fast and then you can let go with the pliers and just let it cure for again I like to do it for about an hour you don't have to do it that long but I like to do it for an hour. So you're only going to want to apply at this point two of those right angles on because if you put the third one on you won't be able to slide it over the bottom of the beer bottle. Now that you have two of those right angles glued to the inside of the gold ring this is where everything's going to come together. Now we're going to slide that ring over the beer bottle making sure that those right angles that you just glued to it don't scratch that nice brushed finish. You're going to set that ring on top of those little McCormick spice jars that are stacked too high around your beer bottle and you're going to line up those right angles with the other wire connectors and just as we've done before put a drop of super glue on there cover it with baking soda if it didn't get a very good bond the first time like it didn't here in my video I went back and added another drop of super glue and added more baking soda. Once you've attached both of the right angles that you had previously put on the ring to the beer bottle, let it cure for about an hour. Now this last step is the same as you've done before, but the only trick to it is you have to do it in a confined space. So what you're going to do is you're going to set the pendant on its side. You're going to apply super glue to the gold tape as you did before. Now you're going to take the right angle the, one, the side that's three-fourths an inch long, and you're going to put that down into the super glue right next to the wire support that it's going to eventually be glued to on the beer can. You're going to put your baking soda on it, let it cure, release it from the pliers, and then you're going to apply super glue from the two-inch wire holding the beer can together to your last bracket. Once that super glue has dried and cured on that last right angle bracket you just applied, you have yourself a completed pendant cover. I drilled a hole in the top of my pendant cover just big enough for the wire to fit through, put it on a dimmer, and voila!